Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before the break, uh, we were discussing about al raqib and al wasi'. Now, we take another attribute of Allah, al mujib which means the one who responds. And uh, that is mentioned in this, uh, this attribute of Allah that He responds in many ayat of the Quran. For example, in Surah Al Baqarah, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ when my people ask you about me, tell them that I am very near. I respond to the person who calls me. So let the people turn back to me. Let the people have faith in me. So that they are guided. And in the same way, another ayah of the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord has said, Call me and I am going to respond to you. And among uh, such supplications, one of the best supplications which is given in the Quran, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Say, O Rabb, increase me in the knowledge. And as it is said by, by some of the scholars, that our Prophet ﷺ was asked to ask for increase only in one thing and that is the knowledge وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِذْنِ عِلْمًا He is not told to ask increase in, in the wealth no just in the knowledge another ayah from Surah Al-Araf عُدْعُوا رَبَّكُمْ تَذَرُّعًا وَخُفِيَةً إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ call your Lord with humility and with secrecy and he does not like those people who transgress we should always uh, think about our weakness that we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need us. Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-ghaniyu al-hamid. O mankind, you need Allah. You need Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghani. He does not need anybody. Al-Hamid, he is the one who has been praised, who is praiseworthy. In yasha yudhibkum wa ya'ti bi khalqin jadeed wa ma zalika ala Allahi bi aziz. If he wanted, he could have taken you away. He can take you away and bring someone else. Yani if you don't thank Allah, if you don't worship Allah, if you don't serve the cause of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can expel you. And he can bring you, bring someone else who are going to worship him and serve him. And that is not something which is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can do that. So, this uh, attribute of Allah al-Mujib demands from us that we always turn back to Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who responds. He is the one who got all the sources of all the treasures of the heaven and the earth. You are asking him who can give you. Don't ask anyone who can't give you, who got no ability to give you. Now here, let me mention another issue that uh, many people who supplicate to Allah and then their supplications are not responded. They may say that why you are saying that Allah SWT responds. But my supplications are not responded. What is the reason behind that? The Prophet ﷺ has given the reason. He said that first of all understand that there, there may be a calamity which is, which is uh, meant for you. And if something bad is going to happen to you. At that time you are supplicating to Allah. So you are making dua which is going to the heaven. But there is a bala, 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 which is a calamity, which is coming down upon you. The Prophet sallallahu said that the two, both of them, they wrestle with each other. Now there are three situations. Either your dua is so powerful, and you know that how your dua becomes powerful. 
with uh, with halal earning if you are abstaining from haram and you are just uh, eating what is halal you are feeding your children what is halal your dua becomes very powerful and uh, you got faith in allah you got trust in allah you got uh, all hope with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your dua becomes very strong so if your dua is stronger than the calamity then what is going to happen you will not uh, receive that calamity at all but uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove remove that trouble from you because of your dua you think that your your dua is not uh, accepted actually something bad which was going to fall upon you has been removed from you because of your dua sometimes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to you and you get what you want so there are these two situations you get what you want or you don't get what you want but a calamity has been removed from you and if this dua and bala they are just equal to each other so they are wrestling with each other anyhow you you did not uh, receive any impression of that dua but but you know that it has uh, it has taken away from you something bad which is going to be fall upon you and again uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said that uh, sometime when your dua is accepted you know that sometime allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deposits it with him you don't get what you are asking but you will get the reward of that on the day of judgment and as i just said sometime a calamity is removed from you because of your dua so don't don't be in the state of despair saying that my dua is not is not accepted at all no it can have been treated in any way any of these three ways to let your dua be acceptable there are some conditions and i think that these conditions are mentioned by me that is al iman have faith in allah and uh, secondly all trust in allah and thirdly uh, you must have uh, halal income because with haram income it becomes a barrier for your dua it does not reach to the heaven and then there are some manners adab some manners associated with dua try to observe them that is also very important the this ayah of surah al araf ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an wa khufiya that gives you some clue call your lord and that is first one always allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rabb rahman rahim call allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not other than allah at all because uh, you can't when you supplicate you can't uh, invoke the name of other than allah that uh, that will become shirk and shirk is uh, that uh, sin which is not going to be forgiven by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala second thing tadarru'an with him showing your humility your humility you are crying you are crying and saying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that i have admitted i have committed a sin oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and then you ask what uh, you want to ask wa khufiyatan and also with secrecy in yani some time some time you you say even loudly but because dua is such a thing which is between you and allah so this is why it is better that you make it a secret between you and allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about the dua of zakaria alayhi salam iz nada rabbahu nidaan khafiya when he called upon his rabb in a secret way he was asking for his son but he was asking and with a low voice our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once in one of the journeys he found the companions uh shouting with the name of allah like allahu akbar so he said innakum la tad'una ghaiban wala asam innakum tad'una man huwa sami'un qareebun mujib he said to them that you are not uh, calling someone who is uh, who is deaf or who is uh, who is not present 
you are calling someone who listens who is near who responds so that is another uh, a good manner and uh, then innahu la yuhibbu almuqtadin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like those people who transgress so what is the transgression in dua there is an, an example uh, the son of abdullah ibn mughaffal who was saying in his dua that oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as'aluka qasran abyad fi yamin al-jannah i ask you about a palace a white palace in the right side of al-jannah so his father abdullah said to him my son this is transgression in this application that is the transgression al itida in dua just ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al firdaus and leave uh, the place and location of your palace and the color of your palace with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the very same way among this transgression is that you ask something which is haram a person is out he is uh, he is a robber and he just went out to rob the people and he is asking the help of allah for that oh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i am going for a mission so help me that is wrong you don't ask the help of allah upon a sin you you try to abstain from that sin and in the same way don't ask something which is impossible a person who is asking for children oh allah give me children give me children all right he did not marry yet you have to marry first after the marriage ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for children and in the same way asking higher ranks like those of angels or like those of prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are asking for those ranks these are for allah allah a'lam haythu yaj'al risalata as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the prophets and the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has given them that high ranks as well so you just ask things which which are suitable for you things which are not suitable for you don't ask for them very in the very same way a person who is asking for then for an eternal life in this world no it is impossible allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the deaths life and death together every person who comes to this world he has to die one day the birth of a child is a a signal that there would be deaths after that as well so don't ask something which is which is impossible so these are the few things which uh, we can say about the attribute of allah al mujib and with this we come to the end of this session wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh